Betrayer is an action-adventure first-person game made by a team called Black Powder Games. This is a group of very talented dudes who formerly worked on such greats as The Blood, No One Lives Forever, and Fear series. It is available on Steam for Microsoft Windows. Part of what makes Betrayer so unique is the mystery surrounding the game's events. As the game opens, you literally get dropped onto the shores of 17th century Virginia with no weapons and very little backstory. There's no objective marker telling you where to go and instead you're forced to actually explore the environment and discover what's going on all for yourself. As you discover new locations, they're added onto the map for fast travel, should you need to return to them later on. It's not too long before you discover that something is very, very wrong here. Zombified Spaniards roam the island, forts and towns are totally abandoned, and the only way out of the area is locked by supernatural energy. As I said before, there's not really any objectives or even really any overall goals. You just kind of explore the environment, coming across clues and other tidbits of information, which get jotted down into your journal under an investigations tab. You do encounter a mysterious woman in red, who ends up following you around, and her backstory eventually serves as something akin to a main plot, but only barely. When you arrive at the first town, you activate a bell which I guess teleports you to some sort of spirit realm. This realm looks the same for the most part, though the sky is now blackened, and you're also able to interact with spirits and remove the curses that keep the gates for each area locked. Quite often a clue you discovered will be linked to a particular spirit, which in turn helps you complete your investigations. The spirit realm also has its own set of enemies, mostly skeletons and wraith type enemies, which are well designed and really creepy. I'm not ashamed to admit that I was happy when these sections were done with. In fact, the whole tone overall is really unsettling. The audio plays a big part in this and is pretty stellar across the board with some great ambient effects, especially when you're in the spirit realm. But even when you're just exploring the forest, it's all very engaging and immersive. Audio is also directional, meaning that certain cues will direct you towards something of interest, and you've got to be mindful of the noise you make as well, lest you alert nearby enemies. You've even got a listen button which can help steer you in the right direction. The gameplay in Betrayer plays out like a standard first person shooter, but the weapons and items are totally original, featuring single round muskets, pistols, and much more primitive short and long bows. You can quickly throw a tomahawk if things get too hairy, and a quick swig from your water canteen serves in lieu of health kits. Aside from weapons, you can also equip these things called charms, which will give you small incremental boosts, like increased health, movement speed, or reload times for weapons. Gunfights take a bit of a turn from what most people might be used to. Pistols and muskets are reloaded by hand and crossbows use a pull lever, which can be awesomely tense when you've got a group of enemies charging in. Primarily, you'll just be fighting the zombified Spaniards and the weapons and limitations for the player applies to the enemies as well. So obviously rushing at a bunch of bad guys just after they've reloaded their muskets is not the best idea. When you crouch, you kind of go into like a stealth mode and you're a lot harder to detect and quite often you can also kill enemies in a single hit, so staying in the shadows and moving slowly will play a big part in this. On the downside, if you do screw up, almost every single asshole in the nearby vicinity will know exactly where you are. Each weapon also has some basic statistics which affect its overall usefulness, like speed, damage, and so forth, and you'll come across better weapons as you progress through the game. It's all done through a vendor system of sorts, which you can find scattered across the game world. Each area on the map usually has one or two forts or towns, which will always let you purchase supplies. Any weapons you scavenge that you don't want can also be sold through your inventory screen for extra gold, which in turn you can also find in numerous chests scattered throughout each area. The Unreal 3 engine is pretty much the gaming industry's town bicycle at the moment, but Betrayer manages to look pretty decent for the most part. And if the high contrast look is making your eyes bleed, it can always be adjusted in the options menu. I guess Betrayer's biggest fault is the lack of direction for the player, even if it was intentional from the developers. Personally, I don't mind this kind of thing at all, and I really enjoyed getting somewhat lost in the forest and just spending time searching for the clues and supplies. At first, I had no idea what the hell I was supposed to do in the spirit realm, but eventually through experimentation, I figured out what needed to be done on my own, and it felt a lot more satisfying. But I can see how this sort of thing can be viewed in a negative light. There are a few balance issues with the game as well. The first few areas can be really difficult, as you've got some pretty crappy weapons and you'll probably die a fair bit. But then on the flip side, the last half of the game becomes downright trivial, after you've got your hands on the best bows and pistols, and had the time to upgrade most of your gear and charms. 
I also found that I had much more money than I needed by the end of the game. There's a few unique weapons that you come across that can sell for a huge price tag, and it means you're always able to keep ammo in plentiful supply, as opposed to scrimping by. As a result, I ended up searching out combat instead of trying to avoid it. It's not a bad thing, obviously, but it does change the tone of the game quite a bit. At the end of the day, though, Betrayer feels like a game that really tries to differentiate itself from the other shooters on the market, and I think it accomplishes that. In terms of overall content, it's highly original and it has a killer atmosphere. I got about five or so hours of gameplay out of it and I honestly loved every single minute. It's really one of those love or hate it type of games and everyone is going to have a vastly differing opinion. But I will say that if you're the type of person who needs their storyline spoon fed to them and prefers a big shiny objective marker telling them where to go next, then this really isn't the game for you.